A lesson for January the 29th, 2017. Lesson 9. We are continuing to study in Unit 2, which is titled Praise From and For God's Creation. Our lesson title for this week is Global Applause. Our devotional reading is Psalms 150. Our background scripture is Psalms 148. And our printed text is also Psalms 148, verses 1 through 14. And our key verse, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Psalms 148, verse 5. Our, our lesson name is to be able to acknowledge that creation exists primarily to praise God, not to meet our physical needs, and that to be able to treat the things of nature with greater respect as befits their divine purpose. Global applause. Verses 1 and 2 of our lesson states, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him. All his angels. Praise him. All his hosts. Praise ye the Lord. Praise may be defined generally as an ascription of value or worth. Praise may be bestowed upon unworthy objects or from improper motives. But true praise consists in a sincere acknowledgement of a real conviction of worth. Man may be the object of praise and may receive it either from God or from his fellow man. In the Bible, it is God who is especially brought before us as the object of praise. In this psalm, 148, the call is to whoever you may be that hear these words. You are invited, entreated, commanded to magnify the Lord, the Lord Jehovah. This exaltation can never be out of place. We are bound upon the grounds of creatureship to adore our maker. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Since they are the nearest to the high and lofty one, angels, cherubims and seraphims and all others who dwell in the presence of his courts or his angelic armies all are to praise him. Psalms 103 verses 19 through 21 states the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruler over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. All his angels and all his hosts, 
or to sound forth God's praise. We find in verses 3 and 4 where it states, Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all ye stars of light. Praise Him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Praise Him, sun and moon. The sun and moon as joint rulers of day and night are paired in praise. The one is the complement of the other, and so they are closely associated in the summon to, to worship. The sun has his particular mode of glorifying the great father of lights, and the moon has her special method of reflecting his brightness. Genesis 1 verses 16 through 18 declares, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. There is a perpetual a admiration and praise of the Lord in the skies and it varies with night and day, but it will ever continue while the sun and the moon endure. But these great lights are not allowed to drown with their flood of lights the glory of the lesser brilliance. For all the stars are called to the banquet of praise. Even though they are not the sun or the moon, they are stars of light. And this light is praise to the Lord. Understand that stars without light would, rend would render no praise. And Christians without light rob the Lord of his glory. We have to understand that however small I be, we must not hide it. We may not be the sun or the moon. We must aim to be one of the stars of light. And our every tinkling must be to honor our Lord. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men, so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so we are to let our lights shine. You might not be the, the moon, you might not be the sun, but just let your little light shine shine so that our God could be praised and glorified in the things the, that we do. The works that we do were that he would receive the glory. It says, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. The heavens of heavens are those which lie beyond the heavens of earth, which was created on the fourth day. Therefore, they are outermost and of the highest spirit, the first, the second, and the third heavens. 
The first heaven is the visible heaven which, which we see. The clouds, the, the blue sky, the sun, the moon. But, but then the second heaven is outer space. What, what, what we call outer space where it is beyond the blue skies. And then finally the third heaven which is the abode, the very presence of God where his God's throne is. And it says that ye waters that be above the heavens. The scriptures from the first page to the last acknowledge that the existence of celestial waters. Genesis 1 verse 7 through 8 states, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which was above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. Verse five, six of our five and six of our lesson states: Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. He have also established them forever and ever. He had made a de decree which shall not pass. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Let them praise Jehovah. All these beings belonging to the superterrestrial world are to praise the name of Jehovah. The maker should have honor from his works. God is to be extolled as creating all things that exist and as doing so by the simple agency of his word. Psalms 33 verses 8 and 9 says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the word of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. He laid the foundation that it should not be removed forever. That, that God spoke his word and commanded and all things came into existence. Verses 7 through 10 of our lesson states, Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapors, stormy winds fulfilling his words, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl. We see that the Lord is to be praised now, not only from heaven, but also praise the Lord from the earth, from, from, from all the deeps, from, from those great creatures that dwell in the deepest parts of the sea, out of the depths God may be praise there. We also see where it says fire, hail, snow, and all the elements, all of the environments are to obey and to praise their 
created. From the top of the highest mountains and hills, and from the most peaceful valleys, show forth praise to God. The majesty and the beauty from God's creation, the the majestic and beautiful mountains and the and, and, and the beautiful and green and lush valleys cry out, speaking, speaking, speaking to, to the praise and the glory of our God. Sometimes we just need to just stop and look about us and around us. For creation cries out to the glory and to the praise of God. For it says that the heavens declares the glory of God and the firmament shows forth his handiwork. Have you ever just looked up one day and just seen just the, the beautiful sky that is there, how that, how that, the clouds and the and the blue skies in their beauty and the radiance of, of the sun and then how that it, it just looks so fantastic. Then at night if you would look up on the clear night and you can see the beauty. You can see the beauty of the stars twinkling in the sky. You can see the the warmth of a full moon, how it just glows and and, and it shows forth. It shows forth just the uh, uh, the greatness and the majesty of God, and and it cries out and tells us that that there had to be, there had to be a creator, not not uh, just a, a coincidence that just happened out of the blue, but but it, it was a a creator that God, a, a, a magnificent God, created the glorious things that that we can behold with our eyes. And it says that fruit trees and all cedars, fruit trees of all kinds, every kind of forest trees, the formation of the fruit trees there 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 it multiple multiple types of fruit trees and there are many different flavors that they all fruit do not taste the same all each one has has its own delightful flavor and each one proclaims the unsearchable wisdom and goodness of God. Also, the growth, the, the structure, and, and various qualities and uses of the forest tree, the big mighty pines and the cedar trees and, and, and all those different redwood trees, how how did they show forth praise unto God? How did those, those trees that they can be taken and, and that they can be used to to build edifices for man and places for for businesses and, 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 and places of worship, how how that God has brought that forth and that and, and that they qualities, the very qualities of the strong and, and beautiful wood when it is finished. It, it cries out and it sings the praises of God. Even the animals in their order, the wild and the domestic animals, from the and also the lowest worm that crawl that crawls on the ground, and then the light winged fowls that soars in the air, all them, 
all these have voices to the praise of, of Lord. Now, this Psalms 148 has been steadily rising in the scale of praise from being from inanimate to animated creatures has been called to praise God. And now, last of It finally calls and summons man in whom God prays become vocal and conscious. We find in verses 11 through 14 where it reads, Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both men and and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. We see here where all men, without distinction of rank, king, prince, president, corporate executive, janitor, all men, all men are called to praise the Lord. Regardless of your age, young or old, male or female, we all have the same obligation and privilege of praise. Praise is everywhere represented in the Bible as a duty, no less than a natural impulse and a delight. To fail in this duty is to withhold from God the glory that belongs to Him. It is to shut one's eyes to the signs of his presence, to be forgetful of his mercies and unthankful of his kindness. And if we are not to fall into these sins, but we are to give to God the honor and to glory and the gratitude we owe him we must earnestly we must earnestly cultivate the spirit and the habit of praise we must earnestly not half heartedly but not every now and then when we feel like it or just when you know something uh, 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 what we feel is good than happened to us, but we must earnestly cultivate a habit, a habit where something that something that we do automatically, that is to honor and to praise God, and so and, and, and so we must arouse within ourselves. Must we must arouse the our, the soul from its slowfulness and sluggishness by what and by how by fixing our hearts upon God. Psalms one hundred eight in verses in verse one states, "O God, O God." 
My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even to your glory. That that the psalmist here say that his heart is fixed. That that his heart is determined. That his heart has been cultivated. That he will sing and give praise to God's glory. And and how do we bring ourselves to this? How do we train our inner being to this point? We do this by meditation on his word, on his works, and on his ways. It's a song that that we sing is say just think of his goodness to you. We ought to just think of his goodness to you. To think of his goodness to to us. To 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 think of his tender mercies and his long suffering that that he has bestowed on on all of us. Just think about where he has brought you from. Just think how he has provided and, and, and how he has kept us from danger seen and unseen. And just think of his mercy of not giving us what we deserve, but and by thinking of his grace, uh, uh, of his unmerited favor that he has been bestowed upon us. Why? Because he he loves us. And so we do this. We do this by meditation on his word, works, and his ways. Psalm 77 verses 11 and 12 reads, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also on all of thy works and talk of thy doing. We need to think about that. And then above all things, that those who those whom his son Jesus has been revealed to by his glorious gospel, I praise by should always be from us dwelling upon his unspeakable gift. That is the gift of salvation. That is that how that I sin debt, a debt that we owed and could not pay, has been paid by His Son, and that and that through faith in His Son, that that though that we were guilty, that we are now justified because of our faith in Jesus Christ, because of what He's done. And so now with, with with that awesomeness, we should be able to just, you know, to just to be in amazement. Like Psalms 1, excuse me, like 1 John 3 and 1 states, Behold, what manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. And the only way that we can be called a child of God or become a child of God is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. By knowing that that he dies for our sins and that he rose for our justification. And so we, as the psalmist, with this in mind, we, we should be able knowing 
that that our sin debt has been paid, knowing that we have an eternal home in heaven, and knowing that our Savior, our Savior one day is coming back to get us from this old sinful world. Knowing that that if that if, if we die before he come back, that that we as the saints that we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. And so with this type of knowledge and, 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 and with this type of inheritance that we have before us, that our heart should just overflow with gratitude and then gratitude should be followed by praise. And and, and therefore we would be like the psalmist in one excuse me, in, uh, Psalms 34 verse 1 where it states I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be his praise will continually be in my mouth. global applause and so that we need to be mindful of that and then that we it should be our goal it should be our attitude to state such as oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together may the Lord bless you and keep you